Hello, this is Cabo. Um, in this video I'm going to talk about something I've been working on for MCEdit, and that is to add tabbed input screens to filters. So um, basically what this does is it doesn't change filters themselves anyway, it just changes the way it looks at inputs. So any existing filters will work without having to have any changes. Um, basically now However, if you want to use tabs, you can set up your filter to actually break um, the inputs into tab screens. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So I've opened up the filter menu. As you can see, it looks pretty normal here. But if I go to a filter that has tabs, you can see now there are tabs that I can select. And this is just Seth Bling's change mob properties filter. But instead of having everything on one page, you now have different pages dividing them up into categories depending on what they do and by comparison here's what the original original mob properties looks like so it's just basically a way to or keep it organized and like I said it doesn't actually change the way the filters work it just changes the way it's read in so um, if I were to run this I would basically have the same effect no matter what um, the only part of the script that was changed here was just the input section I didn't change anything else, so it only changes what the input looks like. So let's go ahead and show you the result. Um, if I select some mobs here, I've got some endermen underneath this roof, and what I want to do is uh, do something to them. I'm going to give them a block, and I think 52 is mob spawners, so these guys should have mob spawners now. And then I'll do the same with this guy, but I'll use the other change mob properties filter, the one with tabs. So go to the Enderman tab. Um, I don't know any IDs. What, 22? I don't know, something like a mushroom, maybe? Anyway, go ahead and filter. It ran. And, well, when I go into game, you'll see it working. But let's do some others just while we're here. Let me show you that it also works with filters that don't have any inputs. So. I've got some redstone here. Let's use Seth Bling's color wires filter. So no inputs here. Just go ahead and filter, and it runs, and it works just fine. Um, let's see what else. I'll do a couple more things. So I've got an ocelot here. I'll make a spawner. So we'll have an ocelot spawner. And as you can see, there's an ocelot spawner there. And I've got some zombies over here. So let's select the zombies and give them something. Uh, I'll add potions. So let's add fire and then resistance. So we'll give them resistance two and filter. All right. So now I can go ahead and save and switch over to Zom or switch over to Minecraft and we'll switch over to Minecraft. Enter the world lag. Okay. Wow. Laggy. Okay, anyway. So we've got the world loaded. You can see the zombies have resistance. they got the particle effects going. And then there's also the colored wool. Over here you can see Enderman. Oh, so I guess 22 is a lapis block. Well, anyway. So two of them have spawners and one of them has a lapis block. The filters worked exactly the same way. They just, you know use different inputs and use tabs, and then the ocelot spawner there. So yeah, it, it works just as expected. All it really does is just adds another level of organization to the game, or to uh, MC Edit. So it just makes it a little easier to do filters. And it's really easy to implement into an actual script. I'll go ahead and show you. Basically, the way inputs worked before is you would give them a tuple, and the tuple would contain all of your inputs. Um, but now, well, actually, I guess it was a tuple of tuples. Anyway, so now, however, it just is a list of tuples. And each element on the list represents a tab. If there's only one element element on the list, it will generate a tab page, but uh, it hides the, the tab label up at the top. So yeah, that's all there is to it. Um, it modifies just the filter.py file and it modifies the 
um, tab panel dot py file a little bit too. I had to basically force it to render in 2D and then draw in GL because I couldn't figure out how to get text to work in GL. But anyway, that's all there is to it. You just have a a list of tuples and it will uh, set each element on the list on a different tab. And, and if you want to give it a title, just have this title um, identifier here, option type title, and it will be whatever the string is that's associated with it. So general, ender, villager, slime, creeper, just like in the in MC edit. Works pretty simply. Uh, and that's about all. So let me know what you think. Um, if you like the way this is going, if you want me to make any changes, um, if you like it as it is, want to try it out, let me know. Um, and I guess that's all. But I guess if it gets good feedback, I can go ahead and commit it on GitHub. So that's all. Thanks for watching.